Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Bottom Line. I'm the host, Bert Miller, and so it's great to have you all back. Uh, I'm thrilled with my guest today, who is not only a client, but then one of the great leaders uh, in the world of work journey that we're all on, specifically as the world of work is changing rapidly, Mr. A Andy Callahan. Andy's a tremendous, uh, has, has that tremendous uh, history in CPG, as well as being a veteran uh, of our military in the U United States Naval Academy um, as an aviator. And we really appreciate his service, but as important now, he's on the show as the leader and chief executive officer of Hostess Brands based out of Lenexa, Kansas. Andy, welcome to the show. We're great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, it's great to have you. Good to see you again. And I, I guess I'd like to start, I mean, the beginning of 2020, uh, when the calendar turned, you did your budgeting, budgeting, I'm sure at the end of 2019, you had your strat plan in order, you guys are ready to rock and roll. So what were the primary focus for Hostess brands heading into 20 at the beginning? Yeah, certainly a year unlike any. And it uh, it's funny you said it's a year ago. It's, it feels uh, longer than that. But we were coming off a, a terrific year in 2019. We have a great team. They were executing well. And we had an ambitious agenda. And it was mostly about execution. We were driving momentum of the Hostess brand. We had just opened a whole new uh, uh, distribution center in Kansas. Uh, and we had announced the uh, terrific acquisition of the Bortman brand, which, in, uh, uh, you know, extended our, our business into cookie. So it was a, a lot about um, execution uh, and the ambitious agenda that we had in front of us. And the team was executing extremely well. And obviously, you always do that while you're focused on building your team. Uh, it seems like a long time ago, for sure. Without question. And so we talk about agility and nimbleness and the ability to have flex in all we do be prepared for the unprepared uh, and i'm certainly your military background um, had you well prepared for certain things with them not being defined but going into 20 uh you've kind of outlined the momentum that you had and then we had some curveballs thrown at us here early in 2020 how did you guys change or you know how did you pivot around some of the changes that have occurred here early in the year and we're still dealing with. Yeah, but you know, Bert, when you talk about, uh, I had a, a skipper when uh, in the, going to the Persian Gulf War and I remember him telling us, you know, when preparation meets opportunity, that's what breeds success. And it's funny, one of the military teaches you is you wanna prepare, prepare better than any, anybody else for something that you never have to execute. And in, in, in this case, uh, you know, when things really change, especially when it's a quote unquote uh, crisis or when people are involved, um, you need to prepare your values and you need to prepare your culture to handle it. And uh, if it's not there ready to go, then you're not. And I feel like Hostess was prepared. Uh, and the first thing we did, uh, we weren't sure whether it was gonna be a month at the time. In February, we started a task force and we said, um, I don't know where this is going, but what are our values? And we outlined three values. And we said, our values are to keep our teams, their communities, and their families safe, to remain, keep them informed and remain agile, and to service our customers and consumers the best we could. And, um, you know, typically, I just outlined the year priorities, and I talked about the business priorities, and very quickly, it changed to the heart and soul of the company when you hit a crisis. Uh, and they were one and two. And if we took care of one and two, you know, at the time where we're shutting down plants and changing everything and consumers are closing up, uh, that was the values that we had uh, to start. And, you know, our meetings change. It says, how do we keep the plants open? Are we communicating? There was big questions we had that I know other companies may have done something else that we debated, but we were completely transparent with our team from the very beginning. If something happened or there was a plant uh, issue, we communicated to them. And through the year in a microcosm of do values and culture matter, uh, it's reinforced that even more. Well, Andy, uh, I, I got to tell you, it, it's funny. I've been very, very fortunate to have the opportunity to sit in this beautiful studio 
here in South Florida and spend time with some incredible leaders of some iconic brands that many of us are familiar with. And the funny thing about that is each of them have said the same thing you have. Safety, the community, and being flexible and adaptability and, and, and agile, and, of course, service. Uh, it's incredible. The greatest leaders uh, certainly go back to that starting point. And we're now seeing who the leaders are and who others that were leaders before a crisis. And the crisis is really bringing out the best in the best leaders. Something we talked about, I wrote down before we got started, we talked about before we came on the air, companies are getting, uh, you know, based on 2020, companies are getting to or finding their soul today. I love that. And I wrote that down before we got started. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that. You know, um, it's interesting about finding uh, the soul. It's the uh, it's that engine you have that's a little less definable. It's uh, it can't be uh, you know defined. It's a it's a north star. It's kind of a, a, a filter that allows you to do the right thing or make the right decisions. Um, you know, uh, one of the uh, comments I I had when I joined Hostess was one of my major goals was to unlock the potential of the team. And um, the only way to do that isn't through me, it's through the interaction and the collaboration of everybody with each other. There's a certain affinity people have to our brand. We're very fortunate, uh, myself and everybody I work with, to be caretakers of such a wonderful brand uh, that's over a hundred years old, but still feels as contemporary uh, today as it probably did a hundred years ago when you see it on, you know, social media and out there. Uh, but the reason why that's able to happen is because um, the soul of the company is really how everybody cares for each other, um, how they um, support each other, how they work with each other, how they even challenge each other. It's not a care from each other in a you know, be nice to each other. It's a care from each other to make each other successful. Uh, if, if, if they're successful, the business is successful, when the business is successful, you know, it, it's a flywheel. Uh, and that's the soul of Hostess. We're not the, the, we're not for everybody. You know, we want people, we interview people, and we want them, as you know very well, as we work together, we don't want anybody. We don't even always want the expert in a field. We want the people who are hostess people, who fit with our culture, who can live in a, in a world where they uh, build each other, build the business through building each other uh, by challenging each other. And um, boy, uh, when that works, it's really great. It's funny, there's been a lot of articles about, oh, remote work and you know, do we come home? And certainly there's a lot of things we're going to learn from working more remotely. But one of the things we, the biggest things we learn and our people are learning is how much they love working with each other. How much they love collaborating with each other. How much they love to get energy from each other. At the end of the day, we're an innovative company. We're creative, we're innovative, we're high energy. Um, and innovation, it, it, the creativity is something that separates us from any other species. It separates us from computers. It separates from other things. We can analyze, but the ability to create something that never previously existing, existed is something that requires just great people making each other better and getting that energy from each other. And that's the heart and soul of what we have. And it's always great to learn and never waste the crisis. You learn so much <laughs> good and bad about you, but you, you, it reinforces what really makes um, this world of work uh, meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. No, very meaningful. Yeah. No question, Andy. And it's amazing as you just described that, take care of the things beyond the bottom line. And uh, the byproduct of that is you affect the bottom line. It's amazing. It's amazing. Well, you think about the, conversation you had even before you took the hostess uh, seat, a chief executive officer role. Um, and I, I love the question that you were asked and how you made the decision to join hostess and what you thought you could do. If you want to share that, you may or may not want to share that. But if you'd like to share that, I think it, it it's apropos at this moment in time because we're talking about what's going on in 2020 and how that's impacting 
us today and impacting Hostess, and then we'll talk a little bit about how that's going to uh, go forward. But I'd love for you to share to share any part of that you would like about how you made your decision to be the chief executive officer of Hostess. Well, it, you know, that's a that's a that's a excellent. We we were talking offline about you know leaders that influence uh, you, and I've been fortunate in my career to have a lot of them, whether it's in. Uh, you know, the military or through my consumer packaged goods uh, career over the last 25 years, I've worked at with some great, great leaders. My first CEO was Jim Kiltz at Kraft. Um, I moved and worked with uh, Brenda Barnes, and I had many great leaders at Kraft. Um, I worked with Brenda Barnes and CJ Frawley at Sara Lee, um, Sean Connolly at Conagra, Donnie Smith at Tyson. They've all been terrific. Uh, mentors, leaders for me. And when you're evaluating moving to a company at the point I was in my career, and I'd been fortunate to work with great leaders, and uh, you've been fortunate to have great teams, uh, and you're deciding, uh, and your left brain and right brain are fighting each other. And what really uh, got me, what I share with you is, uh, you know, I've been, my my father passed away uh, nearly 95 years old at 18 months ago. And uh, you know, he was obviously a large influence on me, but, um, you know, when I was taking the job, I was, uh, what I share with you is I was uh, telling him about the job and he's like, oh, that's great. I'm proud of you, uh, son. And he goes, do you think you can make a difference? And in my old, uh, form, uh, you know, I started saying, oh, well, you know, I started talking about the great brand and the, the snacking trends and how it fits with my experience. He, he stops me. He goes, oh, I know you'll be able to do that but do you think you can make a difference in the people? And to put it in perspective, my dad is a leader, uh, worked in a factory basically for 50 years. Uh, and at his funeral, uh, I mean, they had to shut it down. There were so many people. When you're 95 years old, that's an impact you have on people. Yeah. Uh, and I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that, uh, um, um, that comment he had to me. And, you know, you get, you get distracted on the day-to-day, -day, but at the end of the day, if you can unlock and make a difference in your people, um, which I uh, try to live up to and probably uh, intermittently do, uh, but it'll all work out. At the end of the day, no matter how your human fallacies uh, come to light as a leader, if they fundamentally trust you, you can get through anything. If you fundamentally care and they trust you, um, your imperfections become less important. If your priorities are upside down, you can never live up to the standard of perfection. Yeah, when they understand that the leaders of the organizations uh, are not perfect, but they're willing to do all the things and, and listen and be vulnerable, but willing to make the tough decisions uh, in our you know, creatures of imperfection as well. Yeah. Uh, the human element comes out. People will, they'll line up and follow you all day long. So let's talk about that. Uh, when, I, when I think about 2020 now, what are some notable examples, Andy, just the notable ones, I'm, I'm sure you have many, but a couple notable examples that, you know, the adaptability that the team has shown you uh, your leaders, obviously, I know many of your, your leadership team, but your leadership staff, as well as the broad team throughout the organization is making such a, you know, a great difference at Hostess. Yeah. Um, well, we, we talked about getting the core team together right away. I'll tell you one really simple gesture, and I'll bring up a couple of them because, you know, I, I don't want to get into total everything, but, you know, how consumers were buying or C-store business, which is important to us, just fell apart. So the whole mix and everything needed to turn upside down. But a very simple thing, one of my leadership team came to us and we were, at the time, we weren't sure how it was going to come out. But, um, you know, our bonus structure is based on performance and accountability, as most companies are. And, you know, we had already set that for the year. And a very simple thing that uh, a couple of our leaders came to and said, we need to change the bonus structure. And we changed it right away. We said, we're, there's no winners and losers out of a crisis. There's only all of us together. And we changed just that we said, we're going to win together or we're going to struggle together, but we're in it together. And we communicated that almost immediately. Um, 
that said, well, hey, if you were looking to hit your, your targets or whatever they were, if this existential uh, change to our business happens, and it was just a very uh, concrete symbol to everybody that um, we, really, we really care. The other one I alluded to before, but it was transparency. Um, we were transparent. We, when we were running our, our facilities and we have a facility in Chicago, we have some in Kansas. And as everybody knows, uh, some of the, some of the issue impacted everybody else, which isn't important. That's ancient history. But one of the decisions we made very, very early was we were going to be transparent with the local authorities. We actually invited them into our facility. We didn't keep them off. We invited them in and said, what are we doing and what can we do better? Um, and we communicated very clearly with our team. If, if we had an issue come up, we communicated to them right away. We said, this is the number. You need to make, if you are uncomfortable, you need to make your own. We're giving you, try. if you're uncomfortable, you need to make your own decisions and do it. We had a point where our leave of absences were through the roof, but we supported all the team. We gave them extra support for kids being away from home. So we made very clear, concrete changes to the way we work in, in sending Peter people, supporting the policies related to, uh, they're all people decisions, giving them more pay, even though we didn't have it. They're all people decisions that have uh, actually, uh, that has come back tenfold as it usually does. Yeah. So how's that, like, how's that going to affect going forward with your team, perhaps with the buying behaviors of consumers, whether it be, uh, multi-pack versus single pack, um, uh, single serve, I should say. Uh, also, maybe channels are being affected dramatically. Um, yeah. and, and so that might require moving people from one role to a different type of responsibility, maybe upskilling them over time uh, from a looking forward perspective. How do you see that coming through this 21-22 um, you know, that might uh, provide opportunities for your team as well through different upskilling and different roles. Yeah, well, you you see um, you see really the potential in people when they come both from a leadership standpoint. We have five behaviors: you know, ownership, positive energy, collaboration, commitment, and uh, coll uh, collaboration. Did I say collaboration? Creativity. Mm -hmm. I said collaboration twice. So, um, but we, we, these behaviors, you see them really come through. And um, we, we've had people expanded into different roles. For example, we, we adjust it where we manufacture and plants. That's now a skill that we have forever. And there was a couple of leaders within our manufacturing team who really stepped up and did unique analysis related to here's what it takes. Here's how you ramp up into a new line. We, we stopped travel across plants. So we had plant managers um, who either were new or were relying a little bit on external help, who now had to gain both confidence and trust in their ability to be able to do it them, uh, themselves. Um, so there's certain skills that always, um, what I always uh, say is how do you turn uh, people skills into organizational skills? How do they, how do they learn it? Because that's evergreen. So we've had a lot of uh, examples of it across our business, our e-commerce, uh, business are digital. We've accelerated that and our knowledge base because our data is much more robust because of changing in consumers behaviors is going to help us moving forward. So uh, a perfect examples of where we're going to come out of this as uh, as most great organizations do stronger and better prepared than we actually went in it and we went in it, in my opinion very strong. Yeah, you just mentioned something earlier that I think is so important for those out there watching this, regardless of role, regardless of the role is people are making choices, how they want to respond to certain things uh, that we're facing. And as we go forward, and it sounds to me, uh, through great leadership, many of the team members at Hostess Brands are responding and stepping up uh, because it's, it's, you know, you guys are doing it together as one. And I, I love that, that piece about it. The, the other part, um, Andy, you just alluded to it. I don't know, looking forward, is this going to impact the modality of how your organization is structured, um, how, how you'll deliver to the, the respective channels? You brought up e-com. Obviously, uh, you, the digital trans, transition I'm sure you guys were already working on and making has been accelerated through this, which is a great thing. Uh, how is all that going to affect Hostess Brand looking forward? Yeah, well... Um 
we, we uh, starting probably about two years ago, we started uh, enhancing our, uh, what I would call our knowledge base. So our digital and our information technology and the analytics behind that to be able to make uh, much better business decisions. Before my time, our infrastructure around SAP and our operations uh, inf infrastructure is very good, but our information data has really accelerated over the last several years. Included in, included in that over what I would call the last um, you know, 12 months has been our knowledge on uh, you know, the digital consumer footprint, our targeted consumer path to purchase. Uh, and, and that will be a large part of our growth algorithm going forward. And it's actually an untapped, we have many, our hostess brand continues to grow within the snacking and breakfast segments, and it has, you know, high relevancy and high currency with consumers. Our new acquisition with Wortman's and Bridges and Better for You is going really well. So we continue to grow above our peers at margins above our peers, and we expect to do that. That's our investment profile. Uh, and, and some of this information and data and the digital footprint that we're gaining is really going to help us accelerate. We've been able to perform at, uh, at better than peers or in the top quartile of peers within growth and EBITDA, uh, despite what I'd say still having a developmental area within our consumer and digital footprint to help it, it continue to drive that growth. So I'm excited about our ability to be able to grow while still having some of these platforms and lever for growth going forward. Uh, and it's been fun to really see it, uh, see the data come out and the partnership with our customers to be able to help drive that uh, for consumers. Well, I noticed one of the things that you mentioned earlier about the behaviors of your team, one of those was creativity. Uh, I'm sure you have an innovation lab as well, uh, like most great consumer companies do, uh, or certainly an offshoot of one anyhow. Um, do you have an innovation lab? And if so, tell me a little bit about that and what are some of the products or direction that, that hostess brands may be going, whether it be types of products, certain types of taste or um, uh, appeal to the consumer. What are you guys working on right now? Anything you can share? I know you can't share, obviously, the playbook, but anything can you share? We can't share everything, but let me talk about the innovation real, uh, uh, real quick, because a lot of times we think about the innovation lab and you think about efficiencies and being able to do things faster and doing it. Uh, um, uh, things cheaper and not having to uh, intersect uh, the, the plants to scale things up. So um, uh, I guess four months ago in, in June of 2020, uh, we opened, co co-located within our headquarter facility in Lenexa, we opened up uh, our innovation lab, which has um, equipment uh, to be able to, uh, on a lower scale, be able to develop bakery products and packaging capabilities and other things that um, we couldn't necessarily do within the plant or it would all be, you know, on a paper. Um, and so what it brings is it's a magnet for people and ideas with stimulus. As I talked before um, about the heart and soul of the company and you know, we're at, at, at our core, we're, we need to innovate, we need to pro solve consumers' problems. So what I'm really excited about, and certainly it makes us better and faster, but it's a, it's a, a tangible point to our need to innovate. And it's a tangible area for really smart, creative people who really understand the consumers and our capabilities to, to develop new ideas and I'm unsure what they're going to be, but that's the beauty of it. Right. We're putting it all together and we're mixing it in an unseen way before. And I'm confident uh, based on just my gut and my experience that it will bear uh, ideas that would not have been born uh, if we didn't have the opportunity in this lab to bring great people together. No, that's terrific. When I think uh a hundred year old or over a hundred year old company hostess brands. And I, I go back to 2013 and from 2013 to today, what hostess brands has done has been short of, uh, I, I, I'm not going to use the word miraculous, but it has been outstanding with the talent that, that you guys have brought in the team that has 
been there for some time and how you guys have adapted uh, to the changes in taste. And it's it's been really, really, really fun for me to watch. So when you, um, you really think about um, your engineering background and your in, you know, the military service that you, you had and your engineering background, how has that equipped you? We talked a little bit about the people and the leadership piece, but other parts of running an organization, how has that equipped you, Andy, to lead Hostess Brands? Yeah, I often say, um, you know, being the, uh, being the uh, chief executive is uh, humbling for one to lead such great people and be entrusted to great brands. Uh, but it's, it's also um, funny in the sense you're, you're actually the expert in nothing and the generalist in everything. And I've been fortunate in my career. Um, you know, the Naval Academy, uh, I obviously, I have a mechanical engineering degree, as you talk about from the Naval Academy, but it is 100%, um, you know, the technical and the logic and 100% about the people and about leading uh, great people. Um, and um, when I went to, started at Kraft Foods, I learned that, you know, leading people in the military is actually uh, fairly easy um, when you think about it, because you're leading a bunch of people that are absolutely driven by purpose. They've signed up for something that's bigger than themselves. It's something you always search for in the business world. I say to people all the time, you must be a great leader. I'm like, yeah, leading people that are just completely motivated to make a huge difference. Um, and that's what you, you need to create within the leadership. I learned that at Kraft. I learned from a lot of my leaders, and I learned from the leaders that I had with CP, CBG that don't, don't take that for granted, give them purpose. Um, and, and that combination of being able to solve problems, but solve it in a way that gives people purpose, uh, I would say is I've been fortunate enough to have a deep, uh, a, I wouldn't say a deep understanding, but at least an appreciation of, uh, of that. I've had... Um, roles from head of maintenance and uh, manufacturing for large uh, maintenance departments in the uh, in the Navy, and um, I've had chief customer officer jobs. I've worked with uh, maintenance, so the diversity of my experience has been probably my uh, and my leaders have been probably formed me more than any deep training in any one of them. Yeah. You the, when you look at the double-digit growth companies, Andy, and, and you guys certainly are on track, some of the best-led companies are those that break the rules. They have a lot of new product development. They appeal to a broader stakeholder uh, environment uh, throughout the not only their own organization, but to the sector they serve. And then finally, which is probably the most important piece, which I, I would argue is the most important piece, they are purpose-driven companies, and that's exactly what you said. You know, you mentioned um, break the rules, and, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about my most recent leader, Dean Metropolis, uh, who has, you know, obviously re resurrected the current hostess of which uh, he mentored me to, to hand over. And uh, he's taught me the, the need to be, to see around corners, see things that maybe other people don't see, but then be bold and confident in, in what you do. And that was the heart of the relaunching of Hostess. He saw something that no one else was willing to believe in and was bold, confident, decisive about going to get And I really appreciate that, that about him. And that lives in a lot of the people who worked underneath the team. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that very much as well, Andy. I've had the fortunate pleasure to uh, spend a little bit of time with Dean. And the one thing that resonated with me uh, in my time with him, certainly I've not, not had the opportunity to work for him but uh, directly, but what I, what I noticed is that when he's with you, he's with you. He has, a, he has a genuine conversation with you about what's going on. And keeping in mind, you know, we were uh, a talent organization uh, in the, helping you guys getting access to talent in the world of work. And so that's, you know, that's a little bit off his radar screen in some, in some form relative to what we do. But when he was with me, he was with me. And I, that's the one thing I really noticed about Dean. And I love yeah. that about him. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. He will challenge you. Mm -hmm. He will, he will uh, in, a, in a good way. 
but absolutely, he will get behind you and support you. And he's very bold and decisive. Appreciate that about him. So where do you think the brand's headed? What's the future? Talk to me about uh, this brand. I mean, you're 100 uh, years old. We're, we're 100 years young, and our future is brighter than, um, than certainly our, our past, and our past has been, you know, iconic. Um, uh, a lot of people I hear, I hear this a lot from investors and analysts, absolutely. They're, you know, I'm, I'm greatly uh, appreciative of, they recognize the quality of the team, the executional excellence we have, but consumers need us now more than ever. Um, you know, when in a time of tension, our brand is unapologetically uh, approachable. We're unapologetically joyful. We don't take ourselves too serious. And, um, and we love individuality. Who else could name their, 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 their bakery products, Twinkies and Ding Dongs, and have Twinkie the Kid come around? And we elicit a, a point of self-expression that is, you, uh, that is not um, common. And the trends around consumers, they're looking for contemporary ways to snack and live in those need states. And the data is unmistakable. And our younger consumers are coming into our franchise at a greater rate than any other cohort uh, or any other demographic. Um, and so they're rediscovering a brand that makes them feel good. We don't want to be a part of everybody. We don't, we're not a part of, of every occasion. But that one piece, that snacking, and we're growing our share of that occasion, both in AM snacking, i.e. breakfast, everyday snacking, our snacks. We now have options related to better for you. And the trends are at our back. And this year has demonstrated, despite one of our largest, most profitable segments, um, when we re released earnings last quarter, we remain on track to deliver the year despite that and position for even better results given the fact that when that consumer comes back and that single serve and impulse purchase comes back, we have nothing but better states ahead. So our business is set up for success. Our culture and values have been sharpened. Our capabilities are better. I could not Bert, be more enthusiastic to continue uh, to see what uh, the next hundred years have. Now I'm not going to be around, but the next hundred years for Hostess are very, very bright. No, but you're one heck of an ambassador for the Hostess brand. I feel the energy. I feel the passion. And so whatever you're doing today will impact uh, Hostess brands a hundred years uh, from today. I was going to ask you what advice you would give the leaders out in uh, that are watching this show, and you've already done it. Uh, there's no sense of rehashing what we've already talked about. I think if if you're watching it as a leader and you've, you, you've not got that, I'd ask you to please rewind, listen to this interview again. What amazing, amazing advice uh, to lead an organization going forward. So uh, thank you very much for that, Andy. I do have one question I want to ask you before we get off, uh, offline here. And it is, uh, it is the final question. We all, you know, you're leading an organization as a chief executive officer. You are a terrific ambassador of your brands but there are times we need our guidance and mentorship and people that we turn to for inspiration and leadership. Who is that for you? Oh, that's a, that's a, a excellent uh, question. And, you know, I don't have one go-to, to be honest with you. Um, I have, I have, I have many, and I've been very fortunate, as I mentioned earlier uh, in this segment, uh, to have many. Um, so, you know, but most of the time, uh, it's related to um, to leadership. Because I can go to the board for advice. We have a really good board, and I go to advice. Um, so it's several of the leaders that I talked to before that would give me uh, advice around uh, the people uh, and the HR. So I feel a little bit remiss of, of calling one out. Besides, I, uh, I my dad still gives me advice despite... Uh, is no longer be able to articulate it in common words. I reflect back on those words. And I've been very fortunate to be able to pick up the phone and be able to call Donnie Smith or Sean Conley, um, CJ Frawley to, to talk about, uh, to both talk about people and uh, talk about how to uh, build a brand. Cause the business advice comes pretty uh, free flowing. 
it's the people you can trust on, uh, on people uh, that makes a difference. And the other piece I would say is, um, I guess the one piece I didn't say, it's amazing how much you can learn and I've learned, and this is a skill that I need to get to continue to get better at, by just listening to your own team. Um, they are closer uh, to your problems um, than you are. And listening to their wisdom um, is, um, has to happen all the time because you feel like an obligation uh, to, to help develop them. Um, and you, we need to balance that as leaders to make sure that we give them an opportunity to develop us. Wow. Terrific. That would be the best point. Terrific advice. Thank you, Andy. Folks, you've been listening to Andy Callahan, the Chief Executive Officer of Hostess Brands. I'm sure you've got a lot of nuggets out of this time together. I uh, really appreciate, Andy, you being on the show. Thanks, Bert. I'm Bert Miller, and this was Beyond the Bottom Line. Thank you. <laughs>